Hello friend, meet Onyx. He's the cat on my profile pic and our resident Tom, the spoiled pet of my teenage daughter Marguerite. He's a Russian blue Scottish freight mix, but he has the gait and manner of a jungle cat. A miniature jaguar, my daughter likes to say. He's built like a swimmer, broad muscular shoulders that taper down to slender hips. And he has a sleek black coat and yellow green eyes that can look cross when he's grumpy smolder accidentally or narrow judgingly, but his pupils can also dilate until they're almost as big as his irises when he wants something from you and knows that it gives him a level of adorability that's really hard to resist. Marguerite is a pushover for him and she fawns over him several times a day, which he rewards with a grumpy, long-suffering look. When we first got the cats, I got my old copy of Newberry Medal winning book it's like this cat by Emily Neville and handed it to Marguerite, saying, It's one of my favorite YA stories. It's an amusing account of a 14-year-old boy and his cat. I said, It's funny, fascinating, and now that you have a cat, very much relatable. And she loved it. We got Onyx at four months old. One year later, we find ourselves with a healthy Tom on our hands, and he's displaying very strong urges to, well cat around. We told Marguerite that we had to get him fixed so he'd be happier indoors. All our cats are strictly indoor pets, which is more than I can say about the neighbor's cats who love to leave stinky souvenirs in our garden, but that's a rant for another episode. In any case, Marguerite's reaction to the idea of neutering Onyx was one of explosive rejection. That's kind of her personality. She's very loud. Also, she's a teenager. Anyway, it's kind of comical to me. The first time I learned of people being so opposed to the idea of fixing a male cat, it was from a collection of short stories by Jean Howard about a fictional Canadian island called Madrana. I love that book. I love Miss Howard's writing style and humor, as I do those of Miss Neville. Anyway, some of the stories feature a huge ginger tomcat called Shaughnessy that was half feral. He was very picky about who got to touch him, and he would bite the hand that would feed him. He's got the island men whipped, plus he was also really popular with the tabbies. The women folk were all about neutering him, but every time the idea was brought up, the men always reacted offended and horrified, as though the women were ordering all of them to have a vasectomy themselves. My husband and I respected our daughter's wishes regarding this, so Onyx remained and snipped. And then, one day, our indoor tomcat was able to escape. Marguerite was inconsolable. We went around looking for him. I set out a bowl of food for him in the garden. There were just no traces of him. My husband assured us, they usually return after three days. Apparently, he knew what he was talking about because exactly three days later, he came back. He had no intention of going back indoors though and stayed skittishly out of reach. So we had quite the time luring him closer before my husband could finally nab him. I immediately gave him a bath and warmed him, keeping him isolated in the spare room for about 72 hours before he could join our other cats. After the episode of The Great Escape, Marguerite was now all for neutering our feral eloper. She recalled the parts in It's Like This Cat wherein Cat came back all chewed up from a fight. Dave, the main character and narrator, had no choice but to bring him to the vet and get him fixed. Here are the convincing arguments that Dave listened to. He actually cried when he got home. I guess some people would feel strongly about it, but it's a hard decision that had to be made for a cat's own welfare. On to the other portions of the book. These could be considered spoilers, but they shouldn't stop you from wanting to read the book. I love that it's set in New York City in the early 60s. I love the witty banner between the characters. I love the writer's humor. I love the sense of adventure Dave has in exploring other areas of the city. I love the wholesomeness of teenage boys craving nature and a pet of their own. I love how natural and understated attraction was between Dave and Mary. There's no aggression, no coyness. They were people with similar tastes and a mutual interest in each other, but nobody was acting silly. Ooh, and I love the dedication. It was obviously to a cat. It said, To Midnight, Mayor of Gramercy Park. That's a private park for which the neighborhood is also named. It's quite famous too with many celebrities living there now. I'm not sure if the book is still being printed, but probably not. 
I got my copy secondhand back in 2001. If you are interested in reading it, you can find copies online. I myself am interested in listening to the audiobook. I checked and they're all still available. So if you like this kind of reading, it's YA, but adults can enjoy it very much as well. I was already grown when I first read it, and I absolutely loved it. It's light reading, but definitely not fluff. It's the right length if you want something you can easily finish in a couple of hours. I strongly recommend it, and let me know if you've read it or if your curiosity has been piqued. Please comment, as I would very much enjoy discussing the book further. Comment as well if you could relate to our plight with Onyx, our own feline Casanova. For now, this is where I stop yapping. Happy Burr Months, by the way. That's only a thing here in the Philippines, but it's an idiosyncrasy I love. Hasta la próxima.